You're probably familiar with the standard model, a theory of fundamental particles and how they interact. These particles have counterparts that are mirror images, or opposite charges, or both. But in the 60s, we discovered particles that were flipped image and charged versions of each other didn't always behave how we expected. We've since adjusted our expectations, but even so, some of these particles still behave in a way we can't explain. It's what's known as the strong CP problem, and it's a glaring flaw in the standard model. In order to understand the strong CP problem, there's a hierarchy of terms we need to make clear so we're all on the same page. First up, we need to review the four fundamental forces. They are gravity, electromagnetism, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force. With the exception of gravity, these forces are mediated by particles in the standard model called bosons. The way these forces affect decaying particles starts to get complicated when we talk about symmetry. Imagine an unstable particle that, through an electromagnetic interaction mediated by photons, decays into daughter particles. If you were to take that unstable particle and flip its charge, what's known as charge conjugation, or just C, the charge flipped particle undergoes electromagnetic interactions in the same way as its antiparticle. The decay happens at the same rate and with the same properties, meaning electromagnetism has what's called C symmetry. The same is true if you were to take that unstable particle and flip all its spatial coordinates to make a mirror image of it, what's known as parity, or P. A mirror particle will also undergo electromagnetic interactions in the same way, or symmetrically, to its regular self. So, electromagnetism has P symmetry. And finally, electromagnetic interactions are the same whether we're going forward in time or back, so they exhibit T symmetry. They also are symmetrical with any combination of C, P, and T, even all three together. So, if you have a charge flip mirror image of an unstable particle undergoing an electromagnetic interaction backward in time, you still know what you're going to get. Simple, right? Okay, stop, catch your breath, let's all take a minute to sit with this new information because I think you know what's coming next. That's right, it gets more complicated. If our hypothetical unstable particle were instead to undergo radioactive decay mediated by the weak force, then its mirror image version wouldn't behave symmetrically every time. It would violate p-symmetry. This was first observed in 1956, back when we thought parity conservation was the law. So, you can imagine it was quite a shock when scientists observed two arrangements of cobalt-60 decaying differently. Since then, it's been observed that weak interactions also violate C and T symmetry, and any combination of any two, though not C, P, and T altogether. So, after reworking the math, the standard model today allows for weak and strong interactions to violate all symmetries except C, P, T altogether, which gives rise to a new problem. We've observed weak interactions that violate CP symmetry. Doesn't happen often, but it does happen nonetheless. In fact, it happens a lot more than we've seen charge parity violation in interactions mediated by the strong force. We've seen that a grand total of, drumroll please, no times. Not once. Kind of disappointing, isn't it? The fact that the strong force should violate CP symmetry, but hasn't as far as we know, is called the strong CP problem. But in science, the unexplained is where the fun begins. Because the strong CP problem is such a mathematical improbability, we think there must be something else at play here. In the 70s, scientists Roberto Pichai and Helen Quinn proposed that maybe there's some undiscovered parameter, like a field that inhibits strong CP violation. If this field exists, then there should be a particle called an axion to go with it. Axions should be chargeless, very light, and incredibly abundant. Hmm, particle that's hard to find and doesn't interact with anything except through gravity. It sounds like another candidate for dark matter to me. And indeed, since the 1980s, scientists have been hunting for axions in labs. As you might have guessed, they haven't found them yet, but they're still looking for them with research like the ADMX G2 experiment. Axions are not the only possible solution to the strong CP problem, and when we eventually do figure out why this expected, unexpected event isn't occurring, it'll be exciting to see where physics takes us next. If the search for axions and their relation to dark matter has piqued your curiosity, check out this Focal Point episode on how today's scientists are attempting to hunt them down. Don't forget to subscribe and keep coming back to Seeker for all the latest science news. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.